Good morning. How's everybody doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Everybody excited to be back? I hear nothing. I hear no yeses. Well, that's okay. Let's see. Let's get Grant in here. All righty. <clears throat> I'm sorry, say that again. I'm glad to be I'm back. I'm to be back. I like school. Yeah, I know. It'll take a little time to get adjusted. I think I'm, I need to get back on a regular schedule. I need some routine. I've been a little, a little too off of my routine and um, haven't gotten nearly as much accomplished as I, as I would have liked, but that's okay too. Um, I'm pulling up a couple of things real quick that we will um, kind of review a little bit before we get started. Get that sent over. Alrighty. So um, I hope everybody had a great break. Um, I know uh, I don't think that they're ever long enough, um, but it did. It go. It went by way too fast for me. But then also, thinking about this past crazy year has gone by super fast. And so, um, if you read the email I sent um, super late last night, but about today, um, just kind of thinking about how fast things have gone so far this year. And before you know it, we're going to be in May wrapping up um, the year. So uh, it seems like a long time from now, but it's really going to go by super fast. And so. Um, <clears throat> kind of reflecting over the past year um, and whether, you know, with all academics or just anything that you've had going on, um, but especially with math, um, like I said in the, you know, before we got out and like I said in the email, kind of reflecting on what have you done well with, what are you most proud of, and then what do you, what areas do you see for improvement? Um, one of the things that I did notice over the break as I was checking homework and things like that, I've seen a huge improvement in the homework stuff. Um, people who previously weren't necessarily um, too good with writing notes, at least you're getting some notes in there. Hello, kitty kitty at Zoe's house. Um, but anyway, so I know that uh, we've, we've, gotten, we've gotten better with that. It was something new, it was something different, um, and I may end up totally changing again. Um, Actually, I, I am, there's going to be something that I am going to do differently when we get back. Um, I don't know if I'll wait till we get back or not. But anyway, I'm going to help you out with the note portion of it. Um, so with our homework, and I'll, I'll go over that more on Thursday. Today, we're going to kind of use as a little bit of a review day. We do have a, a section to cover today that still deals with inequalities. And then on Thursday, we're going to shift gears to our next unit. So what... Um, with that unit, be prepared to um, print out a packet that I'm going to send you. And with that packet, one of the things that'll be different is you will actually take your notes in your packet. So then that way, when you're doing your homework, you're not having to write the notes on the homework. You'll have a packet that you're doing um, that'll be kind of notes and things like that. That we'll see. You know, uh, you know, y'all know that I'm always looking for what is going to be the best way for you guys to learn. That is my goal. My goal is never to give you more work. Um, that busy work is, is worthless. Busy work is not needed. Um, you'll also notice that I don't assign you a hundred problems at a time. That is not needed. If I can see through, you know, five to seven problems on a certain skill, um, that gives me a good idea of whether you've mastered the skill or not. So I'm not one to give busy work. I'm not one to just give you work to give you work. So just know that whenever I do make these changes, <clears throat> it's because I, I keep trying to find the most efficient way, meaning the least work for you, but the most effective way for you to learn. So anyway, so just know that um, on Thursday, things will be a little bit different. I will send you something that I will either need you to print out or just be able to have on your screen to, you know, write on notebook paper. We'll, we'll work all that out because I know sometimes printing is not necessarily the easiest for you. If, you know, printers out of ink or printer won't link up, that's the problems I've been having. My printer just decides to go offline all the time. I don't know if it's just because it's really old, but every single time I go to print something, it says offline, I have to shut down the Wi-Fi and restart everything. And it's a major hassle. So we'll, you know, let me know if you have problems with that and we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to 
say before we get started, anything great and exciting happen over the holidays? I hope everybody has stayed well. I hope your families have stayed well. I know that it's um, the numbers have been kind of crazy, um, but hopefully everybody has been well. My family and friends went to Six Flags. Oh, fun. So getting out and doing some stuff. That's awesome. It was, you know, we had that super cold spell. So that was kind of fun to to get to have even just the thought or maybe see a flurry in the air. That was, that was kind of fun for yeah, Christmas. Big snow, so that was fun. Yeah. And so anything else? All righty. So as y'all know that we will have two weeks virtual, and then we're going to be back full time in the classroom. Again, my hope is that that's going to help tremendously. Um, I think it will help you guys as far as attention, because I know a two hour Zoom is, is not you know, a lot of fun. I know a 50 minute Zoom is not a whole lot of fun, let alone two 50 minute Zooms on one subject one day, hearing one teacher talk on and on and on. I know it's not fun. I get that. Um, so anyway, so hopefully that'll be kind of a, a good thing um, that we'll be kind of making some changes in a couple of weeks and um, to wrap up the year. Alrighty, so um, a couple of housekeeping tips or a couple of housekeeping things to take care of. Um, I think for the most part, everybody sent in their inequalities packet. That was the one that was due over the holidays. If you have not sent that in yet, um, go ahead and send that to me today. You can either do that via email or you can upload it. Um, so if I don't have it from you by this afternoon, I'll be sure to let you know. Um, if you've already uploaded it, great, I've got it. I want to say that there was only two people that hadn't done it, so it's it's not many. So if you need to just you know go back and check check your uploads. Um, or if you've emailed it to me, don't, don't stress about that. Uh, um, I have it. So anyway, um, we were talking about inequalities before we left um, for the holidays. And so we talked about how with inequalities, then um, I'm dealing with something that is greater than another item, less than another item, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Um, so we're talking about where I just do not have two things that are equal to each other. That's the main thing within equalities. And we also learned that when I have an answer with inequalities, I'm using that inequality because there's an infinite number of possible solutions that I have. So one of the things I wanted to look at today is um, when I'm graphing inequalities. So what I'm gonna do, let me see, let me make sure I've got this <clears throat> loaded real quick. So let's see, algebra one. Inequalities. Okay, so actually, um, if you have your packet with you, you can go ahead and pull it out. If you don't, you can just get a new sheet of paper, okay? So if you've got your inequalities packet, let me share my screen real quick so you'll see. Alrighty, so our first page of our inequalities packet, we had, um, it says solving inequalities number one. Um, and so this was the one where we had the basic packet or the basic solving inequalities where I have something on one side is greater than, less than, equal to, whatever. And so remember that our biggest thing was if I multiply or divide by a negative number, I've got to flip my sign. OK, so that was something. Um, and as we kind of go through these, um, I have not uh, finished grading inequality sheets. So if you find any of these that you might need to go back and check on, I think I noticed that um, you all would usually do pretty well flipping your sign if you had. Um, if you were dividing by a negative but you didn't always flip when you multiplied by a negative. So that may be something that we catch as we're going through this. And if you need to make a correction or something, um, just let me know. You can send me an email or whatever and let me know that you wanna you know, correct something. But basically what I wanted to talk about today is kind of 
graphing inequalities because the next section we're going to move into, um, <clears throat> we are going to be graphing equations um, that have both the X and Y, just like we did when we were doing our graphing unit. Sometimes I have to graph a line that involves an inequality. But first of all, we're going to start out with these simple ones. And so think about, um, like on this example here, I've got 7x is less than 56. So you divide both sides by 7 and you end up with x is less than 8. You can either do this on your packet or on a separate sheet of paper. It's up to you, OK? But I want you to make sure you have x is less than 8. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw a simple number line. Now, when we do a simple number line, you do not have to label every single number, OK? What I do want to label is 0. On the right hand side, I'm going to label 8. On the left hand side, I'm going to do a negative 8. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm showing that x is less than 8. OK, so I'm using that eight as my guideline. I want to have a positive and a negative. OK, now one of the things I want to make a note of is when graphing less than or greater than use open circle at number. And I'm going to explain that in just a minute. So when graphing less than or greater than, use an open circle at the number. OK. And then let's see if I've got, I don't have one of them that's on here. But we'll go ahead and make the note right over here. When graphing less than or equal to greater than or equal to use a solid circle at number. <coughs> and like I said, I'm going to explain that better in just a minute. So when we look at this one and I have x is less than 8. I only have the less than, I don't have less than or equal to. So that means that at my number eight, I'm going to make an open circle. OK, so I just draw a circle at that number eight. Now, one of the things I'm going to show you is I'll show you a little trick. Notice my symbol right here is a less than, but it also kind of looks like an arrow, doesn't it? So you can see the way that that is pointed and it's pointed to the left hand side. So what that means is after I draw my open circle, I'm going to shade my number line going to the left hand side because that matches the direction of my inequality. Does that make sense? Does anybody have questions on why I went that direction? I put my open circle because it is less than not less than or equal to, so I have to have an open circle. Then based on the direction of my inequality symbol, I shade my line going that direction that matches that arrow, OK? So what that's showing me is that if I were to graph this answer, every answer less than 8 is a possible solution for my inequality. OK, so we're going to do that for the next one that's next to it. So again, like I said, you just draw a basic number line, but you don't have to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and go all the way to 16. And you don't have to do negatives all the way to negative 16. We're just going to put zero in the middle. We'll put 16 on the right. Negative 16 on the left. Now, if you notice, our answer is X is greater than negative 16. So because it is greater than, I'm going to have an open circle at negative 16. It's an open circle because it does not include the number 16. Now, if it was greater than or equal to and it included the possibility of 16, then it would be the solid circle. And we're going to look at that example in just a minute. But, but it doesn't. 
it says X is greater than negative 16. So I put my open circle at negative 16. Now notice the direction my arrow is pointing. Because my arrow is pointing to the right, I'm going to shade everything to the right hand side. Any questions on that? All right, and let's look at our last example. Remember on this one, I had to divide by negative two. Therefore, my sign had to flip. And actually this one does have a greater than, or I mean, this one has um, an equal to sign. It's just hard to see in the answer, but you can see here that we've got that symbol. Okay, so again, I'm gonna draw my line. I'll put zero in the middle. I'm gonna put 45 over here, negative 45 over here. All I'm doing is taking whatever this number is, I'm putting that number on the number line and then it's opposite, okay? So if it's negative, I've got my negative 45 and then the opposite is positive 45. All right, so like I said, notice here our sign did have to flip and it does include the equal to sign. I just can't see it because they wrote it, they put a, a, a line for the answer and that ran into the, the equal to sign. Okay, so here, because it has X is greater than or equal to negative 45, this time I'm doing a solid circle because it has my equal to sign with my inequality. So that means negative 45 could be a possible answer to this equation. All the other times it, it could not because it was just a single inequality. It was not a double inequality. It just had less than, it just had greater than, but this time I have greater than or equal to. So I put my solid sign. And then again, I look at my arrow to see which way it's pointing. So I can see that I'm shading to the right-hand side. Okay. So when I'm graphing a simple inequality, all I'm doing is looking and first and foremost, I'm deciding is it an open circle or a closed circle? And that's gonna be based on the inequality. And then I'm looking to see which direction do I shade in, okay? So what I wanna do, <clears throat> let's go ahead and let's look at, we're gonna do just the left-hand column here. And hopefully if you've got your homework with you, if you've already done this and submitted it, you're good to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're gonna walk through these real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. I did end up with a sinus infection over the holidays, which was not fun because, of course, everybody thought I had COVID, but I did not. I, of course, I had to go get tested, but um, they gave me an antibiotic and all kinds of medicine and still have a little bit of cough, but I'm good. All right. So 8x is less than 120. Divide by 8. Divide by 8. And 120 divided by 8 is 15. So x is less than 15. So I'm going to draw my inequality, I'm going to draw my number line, 0. Put a positive 15 over here because that's what I got in my answer. Put the opposite on the left-hand side. Now I have x is less than 15. My first thing I have to decide is, is it going to be an open circle or a closed circle? Which one am I gonna use, open or closed? It's gonna be open. Good, it's gonna be open because it does not include the equal to sign, okay? So it is gonna be an open circle at the number 15. I look at which way my arrow is pointing in my inequality sign and I see that I'm gonna shade everything to the left. At any point that you are not following or that you're struggling and I'm not making sense, please tell me, okay? Please don't ever not understand something. I know we don't always like to pipe up in the middle of a, of a Zoom call and we don't want to talk or whatever, but if you do not understand, please be sure to let me know. I don't want you leaving this not understanding what we're doing. All righty, <clears throat> number four. On this one, I have X plus 20 is less than or equal to 75. So here I see that I have a double inequality. I've got less than or equal to. So automatically I know, hey, I'm going to have a closed circle in this problem. 
So subtract 20, subtract 20, X is less than or equal to 55. Okay, so on this one, number line, zeros in the middle, positive 55 over here, negative 55 over here. We've already said, I know I'm gonna have a closed circle because it is a double inequality. Now notice my arrow is moving, is, uh, is directed to the left. So everything to the left gets shaded. Let's look at the next one. The next one, the first thing I have to do is subtract 20 from each side. So 4x is less than 80. Divide by 4, divide by 4, and x is less than 20. Number line, 0, 20, negative 20. Now I'll look and say, okay, open or closed, it's a single inequality, so it's going to be open at the number 20. My arrow is pointing to the left, so I shade to the left. And then we'll do the last one. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is subtract 20 from each side. So I have negative 20x is less than or equal to, I know I'm gonna have, I've got a double inequality, and 40 minus 20 is 380. All right, so now I've got negative 20x is less than or equal to 380. Now, I'm dividing by a negative 20. Because I'm dividing by a negative, I'm gonna circle my sign so I make sure to flip it. So X is greater than or equal to, and 380 divided by negative 20 will give me negative 19. Okay. Remember to flip your sign if you multiply or divide by a negative number. I'm gonna draw my little number line, put my zero, positive 19, negative 19. Now I look and say, okay, will it be an open or closed circle? It's gonna be closed because I have a double inequality. So I'm gonna put my closed circle at negative 19. My arrow is pointing to the right, so I shade everything to the right-hand side. All right, so that's graphing just a single inequality. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna look at is I want to move on, let's go to, let's go to the third page of our packet where it was absolute value inequalities number one. Remember on these, we ended up having two answers. And, but we had to pay attention to where we were combining it all into one single statement or we had an or statement. Okay, so let's review that for just a minute. When I have a less than symbol, okay, so if I'm dealing with less than, I start out by rewriting everything without my absolute value symbols. I drop my absolute value symbols and the first thing I do is write um, I'll put write the opposite of B on left right X in middle right B on right. So this was dealing with our less than. I'm gonna go ahead and put less than or less than or equal to. Okay, so you can see here, the first thing we have is negative B on the left-hand side. We have our less than symbol. We're gonna put X in the middle. This says A, but y'all know we use X in our, in our actual equations. And then um, whatever B is in the original problem goes on the right-hand side. So again, it's the kind of thing that if it's negative on one side, you're using the opposite on the other, okay? Our greater than was a different situation. With our greater than symbol, we have to break it into an or statement. So we drop the inequalities and we drop the um, absolute value 
And then with that one, I'm going to just write it as A is greater than B or A is less than negative B. So I take the opposite sign and the negative for my second one. Okay, so we're going to do, um, we'll just do the top three because we'll have two that are gonna be less thans and one that'll be a greater than. All right, so this first one, we have X plus, the absolute value of X plus eight is less than 13. So this is where we break it into where I've got, this is my value um, of B. I'm sorry. So what I've got to do is I've got to have, um, well, well, I'll go ahead and write it as negative B is less than A is less than B. Remember this is B and this is A. So I keep A exactly like it is. I'm gonna have negative 13 is less than X plus eight, which is less than 13. So A is everything that's inside those absolute value symbols. In my problem, B is a positive 13. So I'm gonna start it with a negative. So this is where I break it into negative 13 is less than X plus eight and then X plus eight is less than 13. So I'm gonna solve, subtract eight, subtract eight, and 13 minus eight. Remember, if I have a negative and I take away another number, uh-oh, I think we might've lost. Um, I didn't have my participants pulled up. Hold on just a second. Sure, I've got that up so I can see it. I'm sorry. Hang on just a minute. Sorry, Zoe. I just saw. I'm sorry if you've been waiting long. Okay. So this is where we have our negative B is less than A is less than B. So we have negative 13 is less than X plus eight is less than positive 13. Break it into two, we're solving the left-hand side right now. So like I said, I have negative 13 minus eight. So if I start with a negative and I take away something, I have a greater negative. And I know that then I'm gonna add the two numbers together and 13 and eight is gonna be what, 21? All right. So 20, negative 21 is less than X. Then I come over here, subtract eight, subtract eight. X is less than 13 minus eight is five. So now I join these into two answers and I've got negative 21 is less than X, which is less than five. So remember, this is a joint inequality, okay? So what I do to graph that it's gonna be a little bit different because I've got two possible answers here. So I know that my answer is gonna be anywhere between negative 21 and positive five. So I'm gonna draw my number line for this one. I'm gonna put my zero in the middle. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna go ahead and mark my five, that's positive. On the left-hand side, I'll go a little further and put my negative 21. Now, because I'm dealing with a single inequality, I'm gonna have open symbols at both places. So I've got open symbols at both places and then I join the two because all of my answers are between negative 21 and five. Okay, so the first thing I did is after I've solved it, I looked to see what is the smallest number, what is my largest number? I've drawn my number line and put both of those numbers on it. I look to see if I have a single inequality or if it's a double with an equal to sign. Since it is a single and it has an open circle, it's gonna, um, I mean, since it's a single, it's gonna be an open circle, but I have to put two open circles. I have to put one at each number, but then my shaded area goes in between my circles. Any questions about that? What we're going to do is we're going to jump across and let's go to number three. We're going to skip number two for just a minute. And we're going to do number three. <clears throat> so again, you've already done the hard part of this work where you've already said, okay, I've got negative eight is less than X plus two. I'm sorry, negative or equal to 
which is negative nine, which is less than or equal to positive eight. So negative eight is less than or equal to x plus two and x plus two is less than or equal to positive eight. Subtract two, subtract two. I have negative eight minus two is negative 10 is less than or equal to x. Subtract two, subtract two, x is less than or equal to six. So my combined statement, I have negative 10 is less than x, which is less than, or I'm sorry, less than or equal to six. So to graph this one, again, Start with my zero. My positive number is six, so I put that on my graph. My negative is negative 10. I have a double inequality here. So I have solid circles because it could include negative 10 and it could include six. And then I shade in between. Any questions on that? Now what we're gonna look at is number two. Remember this one is our or situation because my symbol is greater than. So remember that what we've got to do is we have A is greater than B or A is less than negative B. So we're gonna start out with X minus eight is greater than 22. We just leave it exactly as it is or a, which is x minus eight, is less than negative 22. I had to flip my sign, take the opposite. So now I'm gonna solve, add eight, add eight, x is greater than 30, or add eight, add eight, and x is less than. So again, I've got a negative 22 and a positive eight. <clears throat> Keep the sign of the larger, which is negative, and find the difference of my numbers. So 22 minus 18 is, I'm sorry, 22 minus 8 is going to be 14. So my answers are x is less than 30 or x is, I'm sorry, x is greater than 30 or x is less than negative 14. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my number line. This is where things are a bit different, okay? I'm gonna put my zero here. I'm gonna put my positive number of 30 on this side, my negative 14 on this side. Actually, I'll move it down a little, a little bit closer to my zero. Okay, now I know I'm gonna have open circles at each because it's a single inequality. So open circle, open circle. But now what I've got to do is I've got to pay attention to my signs. Look at this one. If X is greater than 30, notice my arrow is pointing to the right. So at my 30, I'm gonna graph to the right of my 30. So notice this side, my answers are gonna be greater than 30. On the left-hand side, my arrow goes to the left, I'm sorry, on the my less than, my arrow goes to the left, so now, I'm shading to this side. So in this situation, I can see that I've got two different arrows going in opposite directions, okay? So when I have my combined answers, when I, have, when I start with a less than sign, I'm gonna have an answer that falls in between my two answers. That's why I have to have two points and then I shade in between because I know my answer is gonna fall somewhere in between the two. When I have my or, it means I'm gonna have this or I'm gonna have this. There's nothing in the middle that's shaded because they do not have anything in common. Let's do another one of those. Let's do number five. So again, the first thing I do is go ahead and rewrite X minus 20 is less than or equal to 42. I just rewrite exactly like my problem is, dropping the absolute value symbol. Then my or X minus 20 is less than or equal to negative 42. Flip my sign, take the opposite. <coughs> Excuse me. Solve the first by adding 20 to each side. And X is greater than or equal to 62 or 
add 20 to each side. X is less than or equal to, I have a negative and a positive, so I have to keep the sign of my larger, which is negative, and add the two, and then find the difference. So 42 uh, minus 20 is going to be negative 22. All right, so I've got my two possible answers. X is greater than or equal to 62, or X is less than or equal to negative 22. Draw my number line, put zero in the middle. My positive number is 62, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that over there. My negative is negative 22, so I'm gonna put it closer to the zero just because it's gonna be closer to zero on the number line. My, these do not have to be perfect, okay? Now, notice I have a double inequality. I have greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So that means I'm going to have two solid circles at each of my numbers. So I know that one's going to be solid. That one's going to be solid because I have a double inequality. Now, notice X is greater than or equal to 62. So I look at the direction that my inequality is pointing, and that means I'm going to shade everything to the right-hand side. X is less than or equal to negative 22. So again, I look at my arrow in the direction that the inequality is facing and I go to the left-hand side. Questions about that? All right, so what I wanna do is check our time. We'll have to make sure that um, I give y'all a break. I know that everybody's probably already ready for a break. What I want to do is let's go ahead and take a couple of notes on this for just a second. I'm going to get a new sheet of paper. Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. I need to get a piece of paper. All righty. We're going to take notes about graphing inequalities. All right, graphing inequalities. If greater than or less than open circle on Number line, two, if greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, closed circle on number line. For number one, that's what I'm calling a single inequality because it is just one inequality symbol. I am not having to do, um, only have that one inequality, so it's an open circle. If I have a double inequality that includes the equal to sign, then it's gonna be a solid circle. Okay, so number three, I'm gonna put draw number line with zero and positive value on right, negative value on left. Okay. So we've got our number line positive on the right, negative on the left. We figure out which kind of circle I need to do, and I um, draw open or closed circle, depending on inequality. Draw open or closed circle depending on the inequality. I'll fix that a little bit. It doesn't, you can't really see that. Let's see. Uh, I 
then shade to or toward and how do I want to say that shade <clears throat> to side of circle depending on direction of inequality. So I'll put in parentheses here, greater than or greater than or equal to shade to right because the arrow less than or less than or equal to shade to the left. So we draw our number line, we have our positive or negative, we decide do I need to open circle, close circle, and then based on the direction of my inequality, I shade to that side on the number line, okay? Now number five, I'm gonna put if you have, or we'll put um, if you have absolute value inequalities or inequality, you will have two circles to graph. Greater than, or actually we'll go ahead and say less than, I tell you what, we'll do absolute value of A is less than B. I'll do my two little arrows two circles joined by graphed line. So if I have the less than, remember I have my two circles and my line goes in between them and joins them. Absolute value of A is greater than B. I'm going to have two circles graphed in opposite directions. I'll give you a minute to catch up with those. <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll go ahead and draw a little picture to So if I have my less than symbol, I have two circles graphed, I have a line that joins them together. If it's a greater than symbol, I'm gonna have two places graphed, but they're gonna go in opposite directions. That means they do not share any common answers. <clears throat> okay, so what our assignment is going to be for you to practice this
Um, I don't have those sheets over here with me, do I? Let's look back at our packet real quick. Let's go back to the very first page. I'm gonna put this in a different color so you'll see. We'll do numbers three, six, nine, and 12. So this is solving inequalities number one. Let me write that down here. Solving inequalities number one. Graph numbers three, six, nine, and 12. And we'll do this on a separate sheet of paper, on separate sheet of paper. Okay, solving inequalities, page number one, I want you to graph numbers three, six, nine, and 12. Those are all single inequalities, okay? I'm sorry, uh, those are all single answers, okay? So you'll look at look back at the examples that we did on that page where I'm only having to graph one answer, okay? Then we're gonna go to absolute values, inequalities number one, page one. So let me write that down real quick. Absolute value, Inequalities number one. Graph numbers. Actually, I tell you what. Let's do absolute values inequalities number page three. And I want you to do numbers one, two, four, and five. So absolute value inequalities number three, numbers one, two, four, and five. That gives you two of the less thans and two of the greater thans, okay? So absolute value inequalities number three. Graph numbers one, two, four, and five. All righty, so it is time for break, I think. If it's not time, we'll pretend like it's time. Let's go ahead and take a break. What I'm going to do is um, I will be emailing you this assignment since it's so uh, since we're using our packet. So remember, pull out that packet. Make sure you've got your packet on solving inequalities number one. You're going to do numbers three, six, nine, and 12. You're going to graph those on number lines, okay, using the examples like we did today. Then graphing absolute value inequalities, page three or number three, we'll do one, two, four, and five. Before we go to break, are there any questions on what you're supposed to do on those? If you have questions, ask me during the break, okay? Take a break.
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All righty, so we'll get ready to come back. And we're going to look at another um, thing with graphing inequalities, but this is dealing with graphing um, linear inequalities. So we're going to look back at that in just a, in just a minute. So um, let's see, I'm going to send you Something real quick. Let's see. Hang on just a minute. What I'm doing is I'm getting ready to send you an email that has um, a worksheet attached to it. If you want to go ahead and print it out now, you're more than welcome to. Um, but if you also want to just go ahead and um, wait and print it out after class, that's up to you as well. I've just sent that. So be sure to let me know if you did not get it. I'm going to display it on the screen so you can see. Um, okay, so what we did a minute ago is we dealt with when I have only one variable, I can graph that inequality on a number line. But remember when we were graphing um, lines, when we, let me pull up this page real quick. All right. Remember, when I have two variables, I have to graph 
as a line. And so what we're going to look at first is let's go ahead and look at in our textbook. Go ahead and open up to lesson 50 in your textbook. Okay, lesson 50 in your textbook. Graphing inequalities. So lesson 50 says graphing linear inequalities follows the same procedure as graphing linear equations. Begin by making a t-chart and plotting some points. In this case, treat the inequality sign as an equal sign for the purpose of plotting points. Recall from lesson 30 that when graphing a linear equation, you join the plotted points with a solid line. When graphing inequalities, you join the plotted points with a dotted line if the symbol is less than or greater than. Use a solid line if the symbol is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So what I want you to do is make sure that you highlight that, underline it, whatever. When graphing inequalities, you join the plotted points with a dotted line if the symbol is less than or greater than. Use a solid line if the symbol is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Just like we just did with our number lines, we use the open dot if it was just our single equality and we used our closed dot if it was a, if it was a double inequality. That's what I'm doing here. So basically, I use a dotted line to connect points if it's less than or equal to, and I use a solid line to connect my points if it includes the equal to, okay? It says an additional aspect of graphing inequalities is that you must shade a portion of the graph to include all of the points less than or greater than the points on the line you drew. So the two big differences here from our regular graphing is that one, let's see, I'm gonna put a note up here. I'm gonna put differences from regular graphing of a line. The two main differences that are um, one is dotted or solid line. And we'll look more at that in just a minute. And then number two, must shade graph. So right now that may not make much sense, but we'll go through it. So the main two differences that we're looking at here is I'm going to have either a solid or dotted line, and then I have to shade. And we'll talk about how to know what to do in a minute. All right. So earlier, we would have had an example that would be like y is equal to x plus 1, right? We were used to that where we said, okay, I'm gonna set up a T-chart and I'm gonna put values for X and I'm gonna solve for Y and then I have my ordered pairs and then I graph it, okay? This is gonna be very similar. So I start out with everything exactly that same way, except for now what I'm gonna do is after I have solved for X and Y, then I'm gonna to have to look at my what I do differently. So you can see that here, Again, they use the same five possible points, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. For the purpose of the t-chart, notice here they went ahead and put y is equal to. They went ahead and set it up like we usually did to be able to find our values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my little extra where I put x and y together. And so we found that if X is zero, Y was one. If X was one, Y is two. If X is two, Y is three. If X was negative one, Y was zero. If X was negative two, Y was negative one. So now I have five ordered pairs that I can graph, okay? So you can see that what they did is they came down here and they graphed those points. So we said we had 0, 1, 
one, two, two, three, negative one, zero, negative two, negative one. So from the T chart, we got our points to graph. So step one, we'll put set up T chart with X values of zero, one, two, negative one, negative two, then solve for Y. Step two is to plot points. Okay, so the first thing we did was set up the chart. The second thing we did is plot the points. Now the third thing is to decide if line is dotted or solid. So step three is different from our regular thing. Usually whenever we plotted points, we always just connected with that straight line. In our previous unit on graphing lines, we plotted our points and we connected them all with a solid line. With inequalities, I have to decide, is it gonna be solid or does it need to be dotted? And the way I decide is looking at my inequality. So in this example, my inequality is a single inequality. So I know that's going to have a dotted line. So you can see in this example that after they plotted the points, they connected with a dotted line with arrows on each end. Okay, so that's step three, dotted line. Step four, I have to shade area that includes all possible solutions. Now this is a big thing right here for step four. <clears throat> so far, T-chart plotting points has been exactly like we've previously done. The big difference that we've had so far is doing a dotted line instead of a solid line. Now, step four, to decide where I need to shade. So notice I've got this line that is breaking this graph and I need to decide, am I gonna shade at the top or am I gonna shade at the bottom? We can already see they decided to shade at the bottom, but now we need to know why they decided to shade at the bottom. Chad? Oh, uh, can you go over number four again? Okay, that's what I'm working on right now, is how to decide do we shade at the top or the bottom. So the way that we decide that is going to be right here, where it says to determine which side of the line to shade, choose any point not on the line, and substitute the values in the original equation to see if it makes a true mathematical statement. Okay, it says to make the process simpler, choose the origin if it's available. So what that means is if when I look at my line, notice my origin is right here. Because the origin is not on the line, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a note here. Use origin to test if it is not on the line. Okay, so notice here, my origin is not on my dotted line. Okay, so remember my origin is point zero, zero. So what that means now is I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna take my original problem, which was y is less than x plus one y is less than x plus one. Okay, now I'm going to substitute zero for x and zero for y. 
So zero is less than zero plus one. Zero is less than, and zero plus one is one. Is this a true statement or a false statement? Is zero less than one? That is a true statement. So shade the side of the line that includes the origin. So because that made a true statement, when I put in, when I use my original equation, I plug in zero for X and zero for Y. This makes a true statement. Therefore, I shade the side that includes the origin. If it was false, if it made a false statement, I would shade the opposite side. That does not include the origin. Okay, so to decide what side to shade, if the origin is not on the line, I use my values of X and Y as zero, plug it in. If it's a true statement, I shade the side that includes the origin. If it's a false statement, I shade the other side. Okay, so let's practice with this. And the first thing I wanna do <clears throat> is I've got y is greater than negative x. I'm going to be adding in um, some graph paper. So um, do you have graph squares? Does anybody need me to email you some grid squares or do you have graph paper or graph squares? If you need to get that out of your notebook or out of your folder, go ahead and grab some graph squares. or some graph paper. I'll give you a minute to get that. All righty. So now what I'm gonna do on my graph paper Add a page. That's not what I want. I'll just do this. Okay. So this is classwork. So this is lesson. 50 classwork. So my first one is y is less than negative x. All right, so on this grid paper, we're going to go ahead and set up our t chart, which y'all know I like to do instead of a t. I use, I like it to be. So this is where I have X, Y is equal to negative X. Remember for the purpose of our T chart, I'm going ahead and put an equals to, and then I'm gonna put X and Y, my ordered pair on the right-hand side. So remember we use one, whoop, zero, one, two, negative one, negative two, <clears throat> so now we have y is equal to negative, I'm going to put my parentheses and I'm going to put my number x inside parentheses. So that way I've got my negative on the outside. Now with zero, it really doesn't matter, does it? So I find that if x is zero, oops. y is also zero. Now I have y is equal to, I have my negative, but now I've got a one in parentheses. So if x is one, what is y? 
it's going to be negative one. For two, y is equal to, I have my negative, put two inside parentheses. So if, y, if x is two, y is negative two. y equals negative, but now my number I'm plugging in is negative one. So if I have a negative, negative one, or the opposite of negative one, if x is negative one, then y is positive one. Again, I'm plugging in. My original equation has a negative. Put negative two in parentheses. So the opposite of negative two or a negative negative two is a positive two. So if x is negative two, y is positive two. So step one, we had to make our table. Okay, we have our table set up with our ordered pairs using the values of zero, one, two, negative one, negative two for x using our equation to solve for y. So now because I can see all my numbers are basically positive one, I've got zero, one and two and negative one, negative two, I've got plenty of room to come over here on my graph paper. Let me go ahead and draw it in a different color. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my grid. All right, so now I'm gonna graph my points. My first one is zero, zero. My next one is one, negative one. That means I move to the right one, down one. Then I have two, negative two. Right two, down two. Negative one, one. Go left one, up one. Negative two, two. Go left two, up two. Step two is to plot my points. Step one, T-chart. Step two, plot my points. Step three, now I have to decide, am I gonna use a solid line or a dotted line? I have a single inequality. So that means I use a dotted line. So I'm gonna connect these points using a dotted line. Be sure to stop me if I'm going too fast. If you need me to slow down or re-explain something, let me know. Step one, T-chart. Step two, plot the points. Step three, solid line or dotted line. Now step four, we've got to decide how to shade. Now, my plan of using the origin has just gone out the door because the origin is on my line. My origin is one of my points, so I cannot use it to determine how to shade. So because my origin is on my line, I have to pick a different point to determine how to shade. So what I like to do is since I cannot use my origin, I'm gonna test, actually just to show you for, for just purposes of showing you how to test, I'm gonna test that point and that point. I'm gonna go ahead and test two points, okay? So this one over here is gonna be point one, one. This one over here is negative one, negative one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test those points, okay? So remember, I've got y is less than negative x. So the first one I'm gonna try is one, one, then I'll try negative one, negative one. So if I use one, one, then I have one is less than one. I'm sorry, negative one. Okay. Because, and actually let me, let me, remember because I've got y is less than negative x, I wanna make sure that that is outside. So one is less than negative one or I can have negative one is less than, I put my negative, negative one, so negative one is less than positive one. Which one of these makes a true statement? 
is one less than negative one? No, that is false. So that means in my shading, this is not included in my answer. Okay, so that means 0.11 is not in my answer. Negative one is less than positive one. So because negative one, negative one made a true statement, then I shade on the side that contains that point. Does that make sense? I've tested, I tested two points. You don't have to test both of them. You could just pick one of them. And if it's a false statement, you shade the opposite side. If it's a true statement, you say, shade the side that includes that point. So because one negative one, negative one made a true statement, I shaded the side of my line that included that point. Okay, let's do the next one as practice. So our next one is y is less than or equal to 2x minus 3. All right, so already you should be going, hey, less than or equal to, I know I'm gonna have a solid line when I join these points. I already know that. Let's go ahead, our first step is to set up our T-chart. X, Y equals 2X minus three, and then X, Y. I'm setting it up with zero, one, two, negative one, negative two. Actually, let me do better with putting those in my... <clears throat> so we'll go zero, one, two, negative one, negative two. So I'm gonna have y is equal to two times zero minus three. Two times zero is zero and zero minus three is negative three. So if x is zero, y is negative three. On the next one, I'm plugging in one for x. So y is equal to two times one minus three. Two times one is two. Two minus three is negative one. So if X is one, Y is negative one. Y is equal to two times two minus three. Two times two is four, four minus three is one. So if X is two, Y is one. Y equals two times negative one minus three. Pay attention with your positives and negatives. You've gotta be super careful. That's why I like to put them in parentheses. That way I pay attention. Is there already a negative in the equation that has to be applied to my number? So I have two times negative one. Two times negative one is negative two. So now I have negative two minus three. Negative two minus three gives me a negative five. So negative one, negative five. Y equals two times negative two minus three. Two times negative two is negative four. Negative four minus three is negative seven. So my ordered pair is negative two, negative seven. Any questions on my T-chart? All right, so I wrote kind of big and I don't know that I'm gonna have enough room. Well, I might because all of my X values are just zero, one, and two. So I should have enough room side to side. So it'll be my ups and downs that I'll need some extra room. So I'll go ahead and make my graph. I might have to extend it some, Whoop. and if so, I will. All right. <coughs> All right. 
So now I'm going to plot my points. My first one is zero, negative three. Start at my origin, start at zero and go down one, two, three. My next one is one, negative one. Move to the right one, down one. Then I have two, one. Move to the right two, up one. Then I have negative one, negative five. I move to the left one and then down five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I have negative two, negative seven. Move to the left two and down seven. We have made our T chart. We have plotted our points. Now we have to decide about our line. Is it gonna be solid or dotted? Again, remember, I look to see if it's a single inequality or a double inequality. It's a double, it has that equal to, so I'm gonna connect with a solid line. No dots, solid. Extend with arrows. Now my fourth step is to test a point to see which side I need to shade on. Now on this one, notice that my origin is not included on my line. So I can use my origin to test to see if it is going to be a possible solution. So if my origin is zero, zero, I have y, is less than or equal to 2x minus 3. I want to test 0, 0. So that means I'm going to have 0 is less than or equal to 2 times 0 minus 3. 0 is less than or equal to 2 times 0 is 0. And 0 minus 3 is going to be negative 3. So when I look at this, zero is less than or equal to negative three. Is this a true or false statement? This is a false statement. Therefore, my origin is not included in shading. So if my origin was right here, it is not included in my shading. So that means I shade the opposite side. Because it did not make it a true statement, it is not included in my shading. So I shade the opposite side. Okay. All right, let's look at the last one in classwork. All right, so we have, oh, y is greater than or equal to, again, is it gonna be solid or dotted? It's gonna be solid because it's greater than or equal to. So I already know that part. Y is greater than or equal to two times x, minus three. Step one, t-chart. So I'm going to have my x values. Whoop. Y is equal to two times x minus three. And then I'll have my x and y. I'm going to use zero, one, two, negative one, negative two. So I'm going to have y is equal to 2 times x minus 3. So I'm going to put in 0 there. So 0 minus 3, that means I'm going to have a negative 3 in parentheses. So I'm going to have basically 2 times negative 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So if x is 0, then y is negative 6. Y is equal to two times, I'm putting a one in parentheses, minus three. So when I'm looking at that, I've got one minus three. So in parentheses, I've got negative two. 
So I've got to multiply that by two and two times negative two is negative four. So if X is one, Y is negative four. Plug in my positive two, Y is equal to two times two minus three. Two minus three is gonna be negative one. So now I've got to multiply that by two. Two times negative one is negative two. So if X is two, Y is negative two. Y is equal to two times. Now I've got negative one in parentheses minus three. Negative one minus three. Negative one minus three is negative four. So now I have two times negative four is negative eight. So if, if X is negative two, Y, I'm sorry, negative one, <clears throat> Y is negative eight. And then the last one, Y is equal to two times, I put negative two in parentheses, minus three. Negative two minus three is negative five. I've got to multiply that by two and two times negative five is negative 10. So if X is negative two, Y is negative 10. Now I can set up my graph. Again, I can see that my X and Y, my X values are just zero, one, two, negative one, negative two. So I don't need that far to go side to side, but I can see I'm gonna have to go pretty far down with my negatives. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start my graph. Let's see, I started up kind of high up here, but then I know it's gonna need to go pretty far down. Maybe that'll be big enough, we'll see. So now we're going to plot our points, y-axis, x-axis, 0, negative 6. Whoop. 0, negative 6. I start at 0, and I go down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, negative 4. Move to the right one and go down. 1, 2, 3, 4. 2, negative 2. I'm going to the right 2 and down two, then negative one, negative eight, move to the left one and go down eight. Negative two, negative 10, go left two, go down 10. Now remember, we looked at our sign, we said it is a double um, inequality. So that means I'm gonna have my solid line Okay, so we've done three steps, T-chart, plotted our points, solid line. Now we need to decide where I need to shade. This is where if I can use my origin, I will. Since it is not included in my line, I can use my origin to test. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna test it. And I have Y is greater than or equal to two times X minus three. So now I'm going to plug in 0, 0 for X and Y. And I'm going to have 0 is greater than or equal to 2 times 0 minus 3. 0 is greater than or equal to 2 times 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Is zero greater than or equal to negative six? Yes, that is a true statement. So you're going to shade side of line that includes point zero zero. So since this was the side that included that point, I shade on that side of the line. All 
All right. So what I'm going to do is I will um, I will send you guys all of these notes if you need to look at them. I will send you the notes that we took um, where I have, let's see, what did I do with that page? Where did my page go that I did those notes on? No. Oh, right there. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and send you these notes. And I will send you the examples that I just did. So that way you've got them to look at. So on here, I'm going to put C graph. Okay, so you'll have those to look at as your example. Now I have emailed you this worksheet. If I can find it. Let's see, graphing inequalities, you know, inequalities. I thought I just emailed y'all this, or I guess maybe I didn't tell. I know I had that pulled up a minute ago. Hold on. Okay, well, it's going to look like this. I'll just go ahead and. Well, there we Let me just pull it up again. There it is. It just got saved in a different place. <clears throat> Okay, I have emailed you worksheet 25. You can either print it off and work these on the worksheet and use these graphs, or if you don't have the ability to print it off, just use a piece of graph paper and, um, and do that, okay? So remember, let's go ahead and write our notes on here. Step one, make chart using zero, one, two, negative one, negative two, four X and solve for Y to plot points three, determine if line is dotted or solid to connect points and then four is to shade. And I'll tell you what, let's just do the left-hand column, okay? We'll do, we'll number these as one, two, and three, okay? So you do not have to do the right-hand column. Just do those three on the left, okay? Questions? Are you gonna send this to us? I've already emailed the blank worksheet, yes, but I'm going to send another email that has all the notes and stuff in case you need to look back at what notes we took today. So um, I will resend that. So like I said, you can either print out the worksheet and use the worksheet I'm sending you, or you can use a, a piece of graph paper and just do what we just did, where we wrote the equation, we set up the chart, we graph the point. So if you want to do it on your own graph paper, you can, just using these three problems or you can um, do it on the worksheet, okay? So real quick, let's look back at the first set of, um, let's 
Holly's mm -hmm. worksheet, I think. Nope. Okay, so this is our homework. I will add worksheet 25, graphing inequalities, left column. All right. So our first part of homework was on the solving inequalities um, worksheet number one. That is from the work that you should have already uploaded to me. You're just graphing numbers three, six, nine, and 12. On the absolute values inequalities number three, you're graphing numbers one, two, four, and five. And then on worksheet 25, you're graphing the inequalities on the left column. I'm going to, as soon as we finish up, I'm going to send you guys an email with all this in it so you make sure that we didn't miss anything since we were kind of back and forth <coughs> between now and Thursday. If you have trouble and you need help, please let me know. Okay, we can set up a quick little chat or we can text back and forth or whatever we need to do. That's one of the things that if, um, if last semester, if there were times that you struggled but you didn't necessarily ask for help, I want you to really kind of set that as a goal this year that if you need help, let me know. OK, every single one of you are capable of doing all of this work and you're capable of doing it well. All right. There's just times that you may need help and that's OK. The whole reason you're taking the class is to learn something. You're not expected to know how to do this immediately. It may take some extra practice and there is no shame in asking for help. OK. Um, I know asking for help takes time and sometimes we don't want to put forth that extra effort, but um, I hope you guys challenge yourselves to, you know, kind of do some things differently this semester if you need to. Um, and let's just start off strong this year. Okay, so don't get behind. Don't not ask questions just because you don't want to ask questions. All right. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and wrap up a couple of minutes early today. If you have questions, be sure to let me know. I'm going to send you guys an email right now with all this in it, and I will see you guys on Thursday. I will resend the link on Wednesday for Thursday's class. It's going to be the exact same link that we've been using all year, but I'll, I'll resend it so you don't have to find it in your old email. Okay, all right. I hope everybody has a great couple of days, and I will see y'all on Thursday. You there, Jonas? Camera does. <laughs>